What's up, you guys? Erica here with Artist Till Death, and I just wanted to do a quick video about how we get cells. I know that this is such a hot button topic. Everybody wants cells, and I just wanted to do a quick video to let you know about how we have been really working with cells lately, and by no means is this the only way to do it or the most perfect way to do it. This is just what we're doing right now and feel free to experiment, do what we're doing or do what other people are doing. Completely up to you. Sorry about that. So this particular video I'm going to go over these larger type cells that I did in a video a couple days ago. Love how these look. Um, I did, you can do a heat method, a tilt method, or swipe. This one was done with a swipe. And um, you know what? I wish I knew the full actual science reason why this works the way it is, but I don't have that. I can tell you the e-science way closer to the end of this video. It's not going to be that long of a video. So let's get going. I'm going to use this graduated cup that gives me what parts I'm going to need for my resin mixture. I'm going to probably only use three ounces now. Yeah, three ounces. So I'm going to go one to one on this one. And the resin I'm using today is Stone Coats Art Coat. It is an amazing resin that um, it has grown to be one of my favorite resins. And the reason it is because it has no smell. It is really UV resistant. It has a working time of over an hour for us every time consistently. And um, you can heat it up to like 500 degrees, which is double boiling water. So if you have any resin left over and you end up making a coaster with it, it will not melt or warp because of the heat of a coffee cup or something like that. So actually, I think I'm going to need a little bit more resin than what I've got going on here, but we'll... We'll inspect that later. So, this resin is one to one, which means you need equal parts of the A and B. You need to make sure that you have equal parts because if you have more of one than the other, your resin won't set up properly. Um, the bottle says to mix like for two or three minutes, but since this is such a small quantity, I'm not gonna mix for that long. I'm just gonna mix until I'm sure that both the part A and the part B are fully incorporated into each other. If you don't make sure that it's fully incorporated into each other, then you'll have weak spots and your resin won't set up completely. Also, make sure you scrape the sides and the bottom and your stir stick so that nothing is left not exactly mixed the right way. Save yourself from heartache. I know firsthand the pain when your resin doesn't set up all the way and it's a beautiful piece, but there's nothing you can do about it. So, I think I've mixed this up all the way. Another great thing about this resin is, you know some resins, there's like bubbles that float out into the air. I call them toxic bubbles because there is, there are ultimately there, um, you know, it's resin. So I'm going to mix that up fully. And then I always pour just a little bit of clear down onto my surface. This is an old painting that I've spray painted white so that I can re-pour over it. Wasn't happy with the first layer, so waste not, want not. We're going to use this canvas again. So the reason why I spread a little bit of clear over my canvas is because if you put clear down or any other color down first, clear will save you um, from paint, wasting paint. Um, it won't, let me start over. If you put clear down, then your stained resin will roll over your substrate more easily and it won't create like that stretching look that some resin has when you color it 
and it sticks to the resin, this will stop it from sticking to where you pour it and make it flow over more effortlessly. Can't even talk today. So I'm just gonna heat it up just a little bit. Get the juices flowing as it were. Pop some bubbles. Best heat gun, best attachment. This platypus deal, amazing. I have that link in the description box below. Check out our Amazon link for a whole bunch of the products that we use on the channel like these. Um, cake snakes, the mixing cups, all of it. Anyways, so let's mix some colors. I'm going to use a few that if you guys watch my channel a lot, you've seen before because I'm definitely a creature of habit. Once I decide I like the color, it's hard for me to move on. And this is probably not going to be a full complete painting because I don't have that much resin that I'm working with. I'm just trying to do a demo for you guys. Got my handy dandy stir sticks. First color I'm using is this Breakfast at Tiffany color. It's a paste from Just Resin. I love it. I have it available on my website. If you like it too, make sure you check it out. Artistilldeath.com. Two T's, two L's. I also have it linked right there. Anytime you use a paste, make sure you stir it up before you put it into your resin. Even if you just used it yesterday, you need to make sure that it isn't separated at all. And just give it a quick swirl should do the trick for that. A rule of thumb is 10% resin, no, 10% paint to resin. If you put too much paint in your resin mixture, it will end up with what I call marshmallow fluff. That's kind of the consistency you end up with if you put too much in there. Most resin paints mix fairly quickly and easily into your resin. Just Resin is no exception. It's already fully incorporated. It is a lovely, no shimmer breakfast at Tiffany's color. Bing, that's done. Next color I'm using is Artisu Gold. This is a metallic pigment paste and it's not focusing but it is amazing I usually have this available on my website I'm out currently but I will have it back in the stock soon you can order it and when I have it in I can ship it to you this, these paints are out of Australia so sometimes it takes me a couple days to get them in or you can just keep an eye on the website look at that luster focus Lovely, right? I don't use that much gold in my work. I just like to add a little hint of it because I think it adds a beautiful accent. Just flex, flex of gold if you were. Nope, if you will. Beautiful. Focus, focus. Now the next color I'm going to use is Stone Coat's base white. It's also called this white. If you're a part of the fam, you've heard me talk about it before. It's amazing. It does have a slight um, enamel smell to it. That is because it does have an enamel um, base in it. And that is one reason why this works so well to make cells is because of the science behind this paint. Um, I will tell you not to just use just any old enamel paint because if it's not the right ratio, then it will end up giving you pits as, you know, if you worked with resin before, you know that pits are the enemy and they're just gonna cost you time and energy and heartache later. Um, I was gonna use this other blue by Stone Coat, but I don't wanna use two enamel type paint. So I think the other color I'm just going to use is Just Resin Turquoise. This is also a beautiful color, also currently available on my website. If you're interested in the 
Gel Coat Colors. You can check out their website. I have it linked in the description box below. And if you use the code ATV, it will give you $30 off of your $80 order, making your total $50 bucks if you're not math inclined, such as myself. And who doesn't like a discount? I know I do. That basically comes out to if you buy resin, it'll end up giving you two free metallic pigments. This is the turquoise color mixed into resin. Let me see if I can get closer. Nope. There it is. Basically, it's beautiful. So, let's get the show on the road, right? So, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to lay the color down, the white down, and then I'm going to push my color over the white. And because the white is kind of oily based, it's not oil based, don't get me confused. Um, it's not oil based, but because of its enamel like science, um, it will make the surface tension change and cells will appear. We'll do a swipe and we'll do a heat and tilt just so you can see the differences. So, let's get going. I'm going to use my Tiffany Lulu, like so. I'm going to use my luster turquoise, just like so. I add a little bit of gold just for that color bounce between teals, blues, greens, give that yellow in there. That's just my preference, not required. And then I put the white right next to it, like so. Ah. Let me get you guys closer in on the action real quick. All right, so this part we're gonna heat and tilt. This attachment's really great for that because it disperses the heat, gives you more surface area covered. Amazing. All right, so now we have it initially heated. I'm gonna turn it up and push my color over the white. Push my color over the white. Look at those guys. Bananas, right? I know it. So, that's what that looks like. Now let's do a swipe on this side. It's having a hard time focusing, isn't it? Alright, let's get this show on the road. So we're going to do color, color, some gold. Now since we're adding more heat on this side, this side's going to be adjusting, but since this isn't a piece for sale so much, it's more of a demo piece, I'm not really concerned with it. I'm just trying to show you guys how I like to get cells. Right, let's add some heat. And this side, we're just gonna swipe it. Let me find a star stick. Here's one lovely volunteer. Looks kind of like a little dragonfly or butterfly. Now that is how I get my multicolored, multidimensional cells. As you can see, they're still popping up. They will continue to grow like this for a little while, but they will not continue to grow so much that they just overwhelm the piece, which is something that I can appreciate because I like cells. I just don't want them to take over, really. So 
that's how I get these spider web type cells. I will post the completed piece tomorrow on my Facebook page. Check it out in the link below, and I will see all of you guys later. Bye. I said bye.